Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we'll do dietary carbohydrates. Uh, we'll speak about digestion and absorption of carbohydrates and also a bit about glucose transport. Now, just a bit about carbohydrates in general. So you have three main groups, but you can also have a fourth one. I'll tell you how. So the first one is monosaccharides. Um, carbohydrates are saccharides. So monosaccharides, they are simple sugars. Um, examples include glucose, galactose, fructose. So monosaccharides are single unit ones and they taste sweet and they are soluble. Disaccharides are the second type. By di, you can understand that there are two subunits. So two monosaccharides make up one disaccharide. So they bind together. An example is lactose, sucrose also, even maltose. Lactose, for example, is a glucose with a galactose. Uh, sucrose is a fructose and a glucose. Maltose is two glucose molecules. Then you have oligosaccharides, which is the fourth one, because the third main one is polysaccharides. So oligo is from three to ten. So from trisaccharides, tetrasaccharides till ten. And an example is dextrin. And then the last one is polysaccharides. Polysaccharides are insoluble and they uh, do not taste sweet anymore. Okay, so they are greater than 10. Uh, monosaccharides, they give you a polysaccharide. For example, you have starch and cellulose. Now let's speak about the digestion. So the principal sites of the digestion of carbohydrates are the mouth and the intestinal lumen. Now enzymes responsible come from the family of glycosidases. It's named after the bond between two monosaccharides. Endoglycosidases, the hydrolyze polysaccharides and oligosaccharides. And disaccharidases, the hydrolyze tri and disaccharides into their reducing sugars. Alright, starting with the process, during mastication, salivary alpha amylase. Remember, for carbohydrates, amylase is important. It acts on the dietary starch and the glycogen, what we eat. Carbohydrate digestion, it holds temporarily in the stomach. Why? Because the high acidity of the stomach, which the pH is around 1.5, it activates the salivary alpha amylase. So when the acidic stomach contents reach the small intestine, when they pass the stomach, they are neutralized by the bicarbonate, which is secreted by the pancreas. And bicarbonate is a base, and therefore pancreatic alpha amylase continues the process of the starch digestion. The final digestive processes they occur primarily are the mucosal lining of the upper jejunum, which is in the small intestine, and several disaccharidases, isomaltase for isomaltose, maltase for maltose, sucrase for sucrose, lactase for lactose. So we know that polysaccharides need to be broken down, right? It's a catabolic reaction. Therefore, we go from starch to maybe maltose uh, to then glucose. Moving on to absorption. So the duodenum and the upper jejunum they absorb the sugars. However, different sugars have different mechanisms of absorption. Uh, there are certain transporters that they need to be transported across the intestinal lumen into the bloodstream or the portal circulation. So for example, galactose and glucose are transported into the mucosal cells by an active process, an energy acquiring process. And the transport protein is sodium dependent glucose co-transporter 1, SGLT1. Fructose, on the other hand, the uptake requires a sodium independent monosaccharide transporter called GLUT5. 
all three monosaccharides are transported from the intestinal mucosal cell into the portal circulation, which goes to the liver, by another transporter called GLUT2. Okay, let's start from the top. So we have dietary carbohydrates, which is starch, lactose, sucrose, cellulose. In the uh, mouth, there is the salivary alpha amylase, which breaks them down into dextrins. They go to the stomach, though because of the low pH, it stops the action of the salivary amylase. Then comes the small intestine, where you have the pancreatic alpha amylase. Right, so it breaks them down further into uh, maltose, lactose, sucrose that can be broken down into the glucose, fructose, and galactose. But cellulose is indigestible, so it goes straight through our stomach and our intestines without being absorbed. Now, this was for digestion. Moving on to the absorption from the small intestine, the monosaccharides, glucose, fructose, galactose, they are absorbed into the portal circulation, which goes to the liver and there, from there to the body. Okay, a little bit about the glucose transporters. There are five of them, GLUT1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So GLUT1 is in most cells. GLUT2 is in the liver, the beta cells of the pancreas and the hypothalamus. GLUT3 is in the neurons, the placenta and the testes. GLUT4 is the skeletal and the cardiac muscles and also in the fat tissues. And GLUT5 is in the mucosal surface in the small intestine and in the sperm. Now we know that GLUT5 is for fructose. It is primarily the fructose carrier in the intestine. We said that GLUT2 is for um, glucose, fructose and galactose. And what's important you need to know is that GLUT2 is very important because of the beta cells and the pancreas. It helps to transport insulin. All right, so if carbohydrate degradation is deficient as a result of uh, heredity or uh, intestinal disease or malnutrition or drugs that injure the mucosa of the small intestine, then undigested carbohydrate will pass into the large intestine where it can cause osmotic diarrhea. Okay, guys, that's it. I'll see you in my next video. Until then, take care. Bye.